Inside this rolling soft case is a boat, a B-O-A-T made by B-O-T-E, who sent this to me for evaluation. Specifically, it's an inflatable kayak called the Zeppelin. And as you can see, I can fit it in the trunk of my Tesla Model 3 with room to spare for life jackets and other things. The too long didn't watch is that the MSRP of $1,249 suggests a premium product, and that is what boat delivers in spades. The Zeppelin gives you many of the benefits of a large, rigid kayak and a form factor that you can transport in a car without a rack of any kind and that is much easier to store. It comes with a very clever manual pump that allows you to get the Zeppelin from car to water in under 20 minutes. You will know you worked out once you're done, but you can get a 12 volt electric pump from boat if that's your preference. There are only two pontoons and a Florida inflate plus one or two seats depending on how you have it configured. All of it comes in that wheel bag that is much cooler and more practical than it might appear at first glance. One of the nice things about this bag is that it's oversized, so there's plenty of room for the Zeppelin, the seat, the accessory pump, a paddle. You can actually put two seats, two paddles in here, no problem, and you're still going to have room to pack stuff around it if you wanted to. It has internal compression straps, mainly just to stabilize things. You don't want these too tight. And then underneath here, which I'm going to show later, there's another compression strap just around the boat. It's independent, though. It's not attached to the case like these are. I'm a huge fan of this accessory pump. Its gauge is actually in usable PSI increments. It has output for pumping up. It has input for deflating. And you can switch it between single action and double action. What that means is when it's in double action like you see here, you're going to get pressure both pulling up and pushing down. Single action is where I flip it after I get some decent pressure into the boat because then it gets to be pretty hard to lift this handle while there's already pressure that you're working against. But I start with it in double action and also when I'm deflating, I just leave it in double action and it literally, literally makes things twice as fast. This is the seat. I'm gonna show the valve because it's the exact same valve on all the places that you inflate and deflate, the seat and the boat you actually have this cover to protect it, but underneath is a spring valve and you can push it down and lock it and that keeps everything open so air is free to exchange. You do that when you want to quickly deflate it, but then you twist it and to unlock it, there we go, and now it will get depressed by the fitting that's on the end of the pump and keep it open only while you're pumping and when you pop the pump off, it quickly closes again, keeping all the air inside. And you're not gonna actually lose any pressure detaching the pump when you're done. It's a pretty cool system. The fitting has a gasket and you can see that lock and it goes on that crossbar right there. It's way easier to do. Here, let me try and do it from this angle. It goes in twist and now it's locked on and then every valve is labeled individually so this valve minimum inflation 7 psi maximum inflation is 10 psi now i'm going to pump it up okay i got this to 10 psi and all i'm going to do is twist and that's it Oop, timber and now put the protection on and now i'm going to do that for all the other valves this goes together in a jiffy Whew. I am winded. It's a fun workout, but you can see the gauge. 15 PSI is right in the middle. There's actually a tick mark there that's covered by the needle. But 15 PSI in here makes this nearly as rigid as roto molded plastic. It's crazy. This is way more pressure than something like an Intex inflatable kayak or similar can do because this is this is the same stuff as rubber rafts that you use for whitewater rafting. This is not the same material that you use for inflatable beds like that one in there. It makes a huge difference. Whew, still winded from pumping it up, but it's not so bad. They actually sell an electric pump. If that's something you're more interested in, I don't mind this. I have it leaning up on a tree because these are actually pretty soft. They are not going to break by you keeping the boat resting on these, but 
I test inflated this at home in my garage and I left it sitting flat on the concrete floor. And when I put it away, these are actually curled. And so you don't want them to be curled. You want them to be straight. So as soon as you inflate it, sit it on a side. You're gonna wanna do that anyway for installing this. It goes all the way in the slot. And then it has a clip just like that. And yeah, that string just kind of floats in the water. That's fine. Under here, you can see the self bailing holes. It has them all along the hull. It's actually this panel here is not attached to this at all. This just kind of sits inside of the boat between the two pontoons and any water that gets in kind of works its way around the front, around the sides as you're paddling. It will get underneath and it will come out from under here. But what you're not gonna get is water coming in from here and coming up through here because this is actually what's floating on top of the water. That's actually a pretty cool system. The seats anchor at their four corners with G-hooks and adjustable straps. This lets you get the balance you want based upon your weight and that of whatever other cargo you have in the Zeppelin with you. The same hook and strap system allows you to adjust the angle of the seat back. Getting into any personal watercraft can be a challenge, but the Zeppelin's widely separated pontoons create a very stable platform for entering and exiting the kayak. That big stripe down the middle shows you where to put your foot, hand, and butt. You don't have to be perfectly on the line, but keep your weight close to that anytime you move or stand up, and you'll have no issue with the Zeppelin trying to dump you. It is November 10th, and I have already worked up a sweat just getting this thing down to the water and put in. I love living in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is another section of Jordan Lake, which is one of the best places to kayak and find places to be where people aren't. Of course, I'm at a boat ramp, so I'm gonna be around boats for a little bit, but that's okay. One of the things about an inflatable kayak like this that's nice is I could put this in at non-motorized boat ramps, but I could also take it to places like this. It's, it's entirely permissible. Today, I put it in the back of my Lexus LX470, completely upright, had great visibility out of the back, had plenty of room to put other stuff in the back if I needed to. I don't have to worry about a kayak rack. I don't have to worry about lifting a kayak onto the rack or the hit to fuel mileage of my already poor 12 miles of the gallon <laughs> in that SUV. And when I get home, I don't have to worry about where I'm going to put a full size kayak. It's a lot easier to store this in its bag in my garage than an equivalent sized rigid kayak for sure. And right there, when you think about the MSRP is $1,250, that's a lot for, for what many people would spend on a recreational kayak, but you don't have to buy a rack for your car. You don't have to run the risk of damaging your car or yourself loading and unloading your kayak and you don't have to figure out a way or even invest in a kayak hanger or rack system for your garage. So $1,250 buys you everything you need to kayak, to transport, and to store. The seating position in the Zeppelin is much more upright than in roto molded kayaks or even most inflatable kayaks. The seat is so comfortable. You can inflate the bottom and the back separately. You do inflate the bottom and the back separately. So you can adjust the pressure of what you're sitting on versus what you're leaning on differently. I have this firmer than the seat back. It has an extra little foot in the front to give you a little bit of a rear recline and then it's so comfortable for your legs 
I'm five foot eight with a 30 inch inseam to give you an idea. But I can stretch out and I don't feel the seat digging in the back of my thighs either. The seat back is adjustable for recline for the level of support that you want while you're paddling. But I don't feel unstable sitting up here at all. It's easy enough to get in and get out of the Zeppelin without feeling like it's gonna tip over. And while I'm paddling, I'm able to get the paddle past the pontoons at a more acute angle so I get a better dig than if I were in the same width kayak but seated lower. And that's a problem with a lot of inflatable kayaks. You're down low and you have to kind of reach over the pontoons and you can end up also kind of dragging your knuckles across the pontoons which can get you abrasions over time. It's not comfortable. I don't have that issue at all paddling the Zeppelin. It is wider than a rigid kayak. So you do have a little bit more sculling as you paddle, but it's nowhere near as bad as what I experience paddling inflatables where I'm sitting lower. The Zeppelin comes with one seat and you could buy a second seat for, I think it's $120, somewhere around there, if you wanted to take a passenger with you. It does not come with a paddle. They supplied this paddle with the boat. It is separate. I really like this paddle. It's very lightweight, very well balanced. It's very solid once you snap it together and then it collapses down in seconds. It's so easy to take apart. Plus, it's easy to adjust to whatever length and whatever angle you want with just a light flick of the latch. Barely any pressure is needed, but that is now locked tight. It's a very clever system. The grips are very resistant to slipping even when your hands are wet. And this side of the paddle has a rib on it for you to get better purchase with your fingers and then you can rotate it in your other hand. It does have drip guards. Of course, I'm still dripping all over the boat because I like to get the paddle up high and there's only so much of the drip guards gonna, gonna do. It does stop a lot though. It, it keeps the, the grip from getting wet from that and it keeps a lot of the water from dripping down onto my arms. It's just the stuff that I flick with the ends of the paddle. I actually love sitting up this high. It reminds me of being in an SUV instead of being in a sedan. I get a much better view into the water around the kayak than when I'm sitting down closer to the water. This is so much more efficient through the water than cheaper inflatable kayaks. And that's a big deal because it means that I can paddle for a lot longer time without actually getting exhausted at all. I do get a little worn out paddling my, my Intex K2 Explorer around because it kind of squishes in the middle even when I have it inflated as high as you can. It just doesn't have the same rigidity as this. And so it's about like paddling a banana through the water. But with this, it's, it's easy enough to do light paddling and then glide. This will glide for a very long time. Cheaper inflatables have no glide. They just, it's like you're paddling through molasses all the time. That's because these pontoons and the floor are made of much tougher material, much heavier duty material. And so the pontoons can be flated to three PSI 
and the floor can be inflated to 15 PSI. It has fibers running between the bottom and the top of the floor that help it hold that shape, that help keep it from bursting from all that pressure. But it makes it feel as stiff as a rotomola kayak. Boat is known for their inflatable paddle boards. And the Zeppelin is basically a paddle board that is seated inside a series of pontoons and then a secondary floor. You can actually pull this floor out from the rest of the kayak. I do that when I dry it out. They're not attached with any adhesive or Velcro or anything like that. You just lay it inside the pontoons and then when you inflate the pontoons and inflate the floor, it sticks itself inside underneath the middle of the, the bow of, of the pontoons. It is rigid enough to allow you to have many tie down points. It's got rod holder places that you can put in the back. You can put a cooler back there. You can put a railing so you can actually stand in this and use it kind of like a stand up paddle board. Right here is something that Boat calls their Magnapod and they sell a series of tumblers, different sizes that will stick right there. So you can have your hydration there or your coffee or whatever. And I know they have plans for a lot more Magnapod accessories. Right now they just have tumblers. But you don't need to use that for your hydration. I just do the old fashioned way of tucking in my cheapy water bottle between the seat and the pontoon. I actually have two. I have a, a refill down there as well. And then just for kicks, I bring the patch kit along with me. I'm not actually worried at all that I'm going to end up with a puncture, but since they have a patch kit, it's in such a great little waterproof holder and it sits right there. I'm going to have it along with me anyway. I'm such a boy scout. I'm going to show you how stable this boat really is. I do like these oar straps. I don't want these to separate from the boat. While I'm moving around and with these the paddle will stay secure. But now I am going to move the camera. Wow, that was noisy. He was not happy. Now, crawl out to the back. It's a little leaning over to the side, but that's okay. Easy day. Oh my goodness. I'm about an hour into this, not in a straight line from where I put in, but I finally found my glass lake and peace and quiet. Unless I get chased down by a boat with guys wanting to fish back here. Oh, there's a bald eagle. Look at that. Get that on camera. I 
action cam. Where are you going? Off it goes. They call it paddling, but places like this, the ability to glide is what you want. And that's another big benefit of getting a nice rigid inflatable kayak like this Zeppelin from Boat. This is just a, a much more peaceful experience than you can get in a much cheaper kayak. I think those cheaper kayaks are worth what they cost for sure. They can be a lot of fun. But a high-end inflatable kayak like this Zeppelin is a fundamentally better experience in every way. The Zeppelin quickly deflates with a flick of the valves, and you can use the pump in reverse to suck the last bit of air out so you can pack everything up nice and small again. Probably the most overlooked feature of the Zeppelin soft case is that it's made of the same material as the boat itself. That means you can pack up the kayak all wet and sandy without worrying about making a mess out of your vehicle. Just be sure to unpack, rinse, and dry your Zeppelin completely once you get home before you store it. I know $1,249 is a lot of money, but to me, the ease of access to experiences like this makes the Zeppelin worth the price. You don't have to buy anything else but the paddle and a life vest. Views like this become accessible. If you're interested in getting a Zeppelin or any boat product for yourself, please use the link in the video description to place your order. It supports the channel when you do. Be sure to subscribe for more outdoor tech videos. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and hope to see you next time.